This is the first batch of Indian Air Force pilots training at the Royal Air Force College at Cranwell in England in 1931. Although a landmark event, this photo doesn't reveal the humble beginnings of the Indian Air Force, as the British felt that Indians were incapable of flying. They were proved wrong. During the First World War, a few Indians joined the Royal Flying Corps, the air arm of the British Army. One of them was Indra Lal Roy, the scion of a wealthy Bengali Zamindari family and considered to be India's first fighter pilot. Next, Indian units were used for operations against the tribes along the Afghan border as part of the British Air Force. They also took part in the historic Kabul airlift of 1928 and 1929 when the British and European diplomatic staff were airlifted from Kabul. Soon, a need was felt for a separate air force in India and the British government in India was pressured to make way for it. So in 1930, six cadets, Subrata Mukherjee, A.C. Sarkar, A.B. Avan, Bhupendra Singh, Amarjeet Singh and J.N. Tandon were selected to train as pilots and they sailed to England. Two years later, on the 8th of October 1932, they received the King's Commission and on that day, a new branch of the Indian Armed Forces was born, the Indian Air Force. Along with a handful of pilots and 29 technicians called the Hawaii Sepoys, it had four Westland Vapiti biplanes at its disposal. It was a huge milestone for India, but the British were still not willing to give due credit and the nascent force was discriminated against. Senior British officials were simply not willing to trust Indians with flying and maintaining complex machines like aeroplanes. In fact, in 1934, the Royal Air Force's chief in India, Air Marshal Sir John Steele, went so far as to advocate the abolition of the Indian Air Force. Thankfully, saner voices prevailed. The turning point came in 1939, when the Second World War forced the British to recruit Indians into its ranks. A sum of £17 million had been sanctioned for the upgradation and the expansion of the Indian Air Force in India. And a volunteer reserve of civilian pilots was raised for the coastal defence at the crucial ports of Karachi, Bombay, Cochin, Madras and Calcutta. By the end of 1939, the Indian Air Force's strength had grown to 200 men. In 1945, in recognition of the services rendered by the Indian Air Force, King George VI conferred on it the prefix Royal, but it was dropped when India became a republic in 1950. On the 1st of April 1954, India's President Rajendra Prasad presented the President's colours to the Indian Air Force in recognition of its service to the nation. On the same day, Shubhrata Mukherjee of the first batch of cadets and one of the founding members of the force took over as the first Indian Commander-in-Chief of the Indian Air Force. The IAF has come a long way since it was set up in 1932 and due credit needs to be given to the crucial role it played in the making of modern India. Not only during wartime, like in the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971 and the Kargil War of 1999, but also in peacetime disaster relief operations, like during the Bhuj earthquake of 2001 and Uttarakhand flood of 2013. The Indian Air Force has indeed lived up to its motto, Nabhas Prusham Diptam, or touch the sky with glory.